Tigers to Team USA. Former LSU Beach Volleyball superstars Taryn Cloth and Kristen Nuss have earned their chance to compete at the Paris Summer Olympics, making them the first ever LSU Beach Volleyball Olympians. At LSU, where football, basketball, and baseball reign supreme, it's sometimes easy to overlook the school's other sports, but to do so is a mistake. During their final season at LSU in 2021, Cloth and Nuss put together a perfect 36-0 record. I'll say that again, a perfect 36-0 record. Now, the duo prepare for the big time, going for gold in the Olympics, playing at the base of the Eiffel Tower. To dig deeper, we'll hear from Tiger Rag Magazine editor Todd Horn, who sat down with Cloth and Nuss to discuss the pair's career so far and what they hope to accomplish this summer. I'm your host, Jake McMains, and we'll be back right after this. I think that most people that contact the 9 day Lifeline are looking to be heard and to feel seen. Anybody that calls here to talk about anything that has them upset, we will talk to them. Even on our chat and text services, you will be actually chatting and texting with a real person. We have enough resources to be able to help people in any type of situation. We have helpline specialists that are trying to handle the variety of calls that we get. It's a very laid back thing. We're not judging anybody. We're just a listening ear that some people don't have. Tiger Rag Radio is on the air. Let's crank this thing up. We're statewide, breaking down the latest happenings with LSU Athletics. This is us. Hear from the coaches. Put together a defense that puts us in a position to win the SEC. The players. The recruits. Show some passion and some heart. And those who cover the fighting Tigers of LSU and the SEC. All those things are going to be there, which are important. It's two hours of nonstop LSU talk. What a privilege. I mean, you get to represent LSU. Tiger Rag Radio is brought to you by Cummins. Cummins creates power solutions that the world depends on. Helm Paint and Decorating. The paint experts of Louisiana. Louisiana Beef Industry Council. Max Home. And the East Baton Rouge Parish Library. Get ready to talk Tigers with producer Jackson Blackman and our hosts, Todd Horn and Jeff Palermo. Three great players that are better people than they are players. This is Tiger Rag Radio. This is Todd Horn with Tiger Rag Radio, and I'm sitting here with um, two former LSU beach volleyball players, uh, and they're the first Olympians. Uh, they just recently qualified for the Olympics. Uh, we've got Taryn Cloth and Christine Nuss. And if those names sound familiar, it's because in 2021, they were 36-0 and teamed up together um, on the sand for the LSU Tigers. Uh, how you guys doing? Well, you're doing well. Uh, yeah, it's crazy uh, hearing the word Olympian being used. It kind of it still hasn't fully hit us yet, but uh, we're super excited and, um, yeah, looking forward to the next couple of months. So, so tell just a little bit of background on the two of you. You you last played at LSU in 2021 when you went 36-0 and together, and that was the first year you were teammates together. Is that correct? I know you were on the beach volleyball team together, but it's the first year you teamed up together. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So originally, Kristen was playing with um, somebody else who she had been playing with for the past four years. And I had jumped around from a couple of different partners. And when you are playing collegiately, your your coaches put together the lineup. So you never get to choose who you're playing with. Um, they create the lineup that they think is the best for the team in general. Um, so yes, we did not play together at all until our final we call it our COVID year when we all came back after we were granted an additional year and um, that was our one and only season that we did play together at LSU. Now what what did you guys develop chemistry right off the bat when you were teamed together in that COVID year or, or did you have that sort of developing as you headed into that season? Yeah it was actually um, in part due to COVID that we're Playing together is because once everyone went home, Taryn being from South Dakota, it was it was a little cold back home for her. So she called me up on the phone and asked to, if she could come back to Louisiana and train. And we just started training, not knowing that we would end up playing together. But it was during practices we would just we were just having fun on the court. And when the COVID restrictions started loosening up a little bit, we went and played in a couple of just local tournaments and. 
um, not knowing what it would turn into, but we were just having fun on the court. So I guess it was kind of just a, a instant click in chemistry when we were on the court. And um, yeah, it just kind of carried over and we just kept finding success. So, um, and then it turned into um, us going to the Olympics, which is, it's, it's been a crazy journey to say the least. Well, I mean, and, and that's three years ago. So, you know, three years ago you were, teaming together for the first time and and now you're in the Olympics and and you just qualified and talk to me a little bit about how that happened so it's it took you if I'm not mistaken it takes like 18 months of qualifying and you're competing internationally and in designated events did did you have to win every single event to qualify or how, how did that work yeah, it is um, It is a very different system. So for Olympic qualification for beach volleyball, it does start um, a year and a half out. So it did start January of 2023, and it goes all the way up until June 9th of 2024. And through those 18 months, you are competing internationally. Um, and no, you do not have to win all of the events. There are three different tiers of events in each tier has as you go up in tiers it is tougher competition and you also gain more points so um, by the end of it you want to be one of the top 18 teams in the world with the rankings Um, so for instance if you win a top tier event at an elite 16 you get 1200 points to share as a team now you have to qualify as a team you can't go and play with a bunch of different people and gather your own points Mm -hmm. you have to qualify together as a team and play throughout those 18 months together so you guys kind of get sick of each other sometimes since you're together so much We definitely have become a a very sister-like relationship. So (laughs) I think um, like most sisters, you can probably um, understand that there are some, there's a little bit of bickering every now and then um, just as to the extent of time we do spend with each other. But um, yeah, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have it any other way. You guys are ranked number two in the world right now, if I'm not mistaken, right? Number one in the U S and number two in the world. That is correct. And, and so I guess you achieved that over the course of the last 18 months. Yes. And so we actually, you were saying how you did not, you don't have to win every single event. We've actually, we've only, um, the top tier, the elite 16s, like Taryn had mentioned, we've only won two of those in the, um, in our careers and in the past year and a half, but we've, uh, been on the podium, which would be first, second or third. And I, I want to say, it would be um, eight or nine times, um, and that is what has put us at the the number two seed. It's just the consistency of um, I don't I do not think we have finished out of the top ten in any of the tournaments we have played in. So just you're shooting for um, as much consistency at the top to qualify. So this is Todd Horn at Tiger Rag Radio, and we're talking with Taryn Cloth and Christine Nuss. And they're, if you recognize those names, they're two former LSU beach volleyballers who are now professional AVP volleyballers, as well as uh, the most recent uh, and first ever LSU Olympians. They qualified uh, last week for the Olympics, and... Um, we're uh, very pleased to have them on our show tonight talking about that. And what's it going to be like playing underneath the Eiffel Tower in Paris, ladies? That is a fantastic question that we will get back to you on. Um, I mean, I think the entire Olympic Games, everything is going to be very emotional. Um, I mean, both of us have been, we've dreamt of being an Olympian and competing and having USA on our jerseys and I think all of it will be a rush of emotions, but um, definitely very excited. And we do, we do think that we have one of the best venues um, playing right underneath the Eiffel Tower. I mean, it's it's iconic. Everybody knows what the Eiffel Tower is, and um, connecting that with Paris, and then also connecting that with the Olympic Games and what that means to the entire uh, world is it's really incredible. But it's not really a beach, though, right? It's just like imported sand, and they sort of mimic a beach. Or how does that work? 
Correct. Yeah, they'll be uh, important. Well, they actually, I believe, the stadium is already built, so they have already imported uh, all the sand to the court, which is it's a pretty uh, common thing that happens. We actually, it's funny enough, we play beach volleyball, but we rarely actually play on a beach. For the most part, it is at um, just different locations, and they do bring in um, very good sand. What what? And I want to kind of get a little technical here, if if you don't mind, for the next few minutes, if you ladies don't mind. What what what's the difference between indoor volleyball and beach volleyball? And Taryn, I know you had a significant uh, four year career indoor volleyball at at Creighton, and you came to LSU. And I guess what made you decide to play beach volleyball at LSU to begin with? And then how how different is the sport or the two sports? Yes, they um, have very few similarities, actually. Uh, one is that they have volleyball in the same uh, or in the title, um, but it really is it's such a different game. It's all the same skill set, like pass, set, hit, serve, um, but it really is it's so different, especially with having only two people, um, the different surface levels, dealing with all the elements, the sun, the wind. We play through everything unless it is lightning. We will be out playing Um, so honestly, everything is different. And when I came down to LSU, that was, uh, the first time that I've ever actually played beach volleyball. So what gave me any reason to be on the team? I have no idea, but, um, when the LSU coaching staff actually invited me down and they wanted me to be on the team, I just kind of trusted the process and I was in it for, a different experience and living in the South and never in my wildest dreams did I expect this to happen four years later. Now, now Kristen, your, your background, your background with beach volleyball is a little bit different. You started playing as a, as a young, young girl, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Yeah. I I first got my taste of it my sophomore year of high school. And then I really um, dove into it my junior year of high school. So um, not, not necessarily since I was, Um, super young, which um, is very different for us compared to some of the other girls. A lot of the people out in California or Florida or just on the coast, they they do grow up playing, but um, I definitely started um, earlier than Taryn did, (laughs) that's for sure. What what is it about the chemistry that you guys have? I know, Kristen, you're like five foot six, and Taryn, you're like six foot four, so obviously two different roles I would assume, but how have you integrated that? And, and what, what, it, what's the communication like during, during a match or how, how does that work? Yeah, I think if you look at um, a lot of the top teams in the world, you, you do see that height difference. Typically Taryn will always be at the net her. I mean, and um, her role is a blocker and I'm the defender. Um, so her job is to kind of protect me in the back, and then my job is to not let the ball hit the sand. And I think my <laughs> well my, my stature sometimes sometimes I think is uh, advantageous for being closer to the ground. I guess so you can get um, you can get digs better or more adept at the dig. Correct. Right. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't really have far to go to hit the ground compared to <laughs> compared to Taryn. Um, but yeah, that's just. Um, kind of a, t- a typical thing. I think we're, um, Taryn is one of the tallest blockers and I'm probably the shortest defender, but yeah, I think it, it can be advantageous for us. And just the, the chemistry that we do have on the court, I think you can see if you ever tune in to watch, we're just, we're always having fun, but I think when it comes down to it, it's just purely our, our training. And, um, we give all credit to Drew Hamilton, our, our current coach who just has, has turned us into the players that we are and the, the style of play that we um, have to play. And we are just super thankful for him for um, basically his, his volleyball knowledge. How have you guys balanced your AVP, uh, I guess, careers with your international Olympic pursuit here? How's that worked over the last 18 months or so? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. We have, um, well, when we when we turned into a professional beach volleyball team straight out of LSU, also just for people, the AVP is the domestic beach volleyball tour, so it ha- it doesn't have any impact to the Olympics. It's just what it's um, Americans separate. are allowed to play. 
Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so is, um, go ahead. We definitely, we, so we started with the AVP and then as soon as, um, the qualification period started and we were actually able to get into international events. Our main goal was to qualify for the 2024 Paris Olympics. So the ADP domestic tour did take a back seat. So if there was a tournament that um, was on the same weekend and it was either playing in Hermosa Beach, California, or we're going to go to Switzerland and try to gain Olympic points, it wasn't even a question for us. We were automatically going to skip the ADP, even though it was only a four-hour flight versus a 19-hour travel day. But we we were in pursuit of the Olympic points, and um, we wanted to do anything and everything to be able to gather as many of those as soon as possible. Um, so we did play a lot less ADP events um, as we were trying to qualify. So the, the Olympics actually begin on July 27th, and they run through August the 9th. And like we said earlier, it'll be in Paris, uh, actually playing literally uh, in an outdoor arena at the base of the Eiffel Tower. Are you guys familiar mm -hmm. with all the players on the international scope at, at the Olympics you'll be playing against, or will you be introduced to new people that you haven't actually competed against or watched? Oh, it's actually um, my view of the Olympics now that we have – played in a bunch of international tournaments has kind of changed because the Olympics will be like all of these uh, prior international events that we have played in there. There won't really be any teams that we have not seen every team so far that has qualified. We have played against uh, once, Wonderful. once, twice, even up to 10, 15 times. So um, we're definitely familiar. And I think that is something you'll, see throughout all the teams playing in the, in the Olympics. Everyone is um, has seen the other team play, if not have played against them multiple times, which, which adds a, a little wrinkle to just the strategy and the dynamic behind these games. I was just going to ask you, is that, a, is that a benefit or is that a, a deterrent in some ways? Um, I mean, I think it can be both. Um there are definitely positives to knowing how a team is going to perform against you or play against you or kind of see what their um, previous game plan was against you, but things change so fast. And I think that's the coolest part about beach volleyball is you have to adapt and you have to be on your own. Um, when I say you're on your own, you do, you have you and your partner and you're not even allowed to have a coach. The coach has to be actually in the stands. You're not allowed to get any coaching during the match, it can only be before they can help you warm up, um, kind of go over a game plan, and then then it's up to you. And things change fast on uh, a beach volleyball court. Lots of momentum changes. Um, sometimes the elements change, and you just you really have to kind of figure it out with you and your partner. And I think our coach has really trained us to um, not really have any tendencies or cues or signs to give to the other team as far as what we're going to be doing. So I think it. Um, as far as playing teams over and over again, I think it may be um, a little more advantageous for us just in the style of play that we, we do play. So a, a Team USA pair has medaled in five consecutive Olympics, including four gold medals. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys are clearly, that's your goal, right, a gold medal? That is absolutely the goal. That was actually from from the beginning. We said we wanted to bring home a gold medal. Um, so even when we qualified, we we didn't necessarily fully celebrate just qualifying for the Olympics. The the goal, again, like I said from the beginning, is to is to bring home a a gold medal. My last question for you guys, and I really appreciate your time, is in the big scheme of things the overall scope three years after you team together at LSU for that 36 and 0 run um, how important was your experience at LSU to being where you are right now oh it's absolutely huge I mean we wouldn't be talking right now if it was not for for LSU beach volleyball program that's where that's where we met that's where we built our foundation and I, I tell college players all the time that is the time in college is to become the best player that you can be. You're never going to have that much dedicated training time. I mean, we practice for three hours a day every single day of the week and sometimes even on the weekends. And we definitely we don't train nearly as much now as we do then. So just having that time to really um, 
build build our foundation and just our key fundamentals and um yeah, that it, it was, again, we would not be in this position if it was not for LSU and especially just the LSU beach volleyball program. Well, Taryn and Kristen, uh, I'm going to ask you one more question. I know I said that was the last one, but I'm going to throw one more in. You're, if I'm not mistaken, you're in, <laughs> you're in Baton Rouge right now. Are you training in Baton Rouge? And if you are, is there an advantage to playing in this heat and humidity or training in this heat and humidity? Certainly we go outside and we don't even, we don't in, um, sorry, we walk out to practice. Uh, we are actually at Mango's beach volleyball complex. That's where we train every day. Um, and we immediately start sweating because it really is. It's so hot, but we have used that to our advantage and say we are playing in Brazil or somewhere that is a warmer location. And our coach does a great job of pushing us even when it is hot so we can look over at each other and trust that in any condition, if we can play in this Louisiana heat, we can play in anything that we are faced with in any other country, which is, I think, a very big advantage. Well, I can tell you this much. There's a, a bunch of statewide listeners throughout the state of Louisiana right now. They're going to be watching you guys and rooting you on to that gold medal, watching you under the, the at the base of the Eiffel Tower. And, uh, I just hope, uh, wish you guys the best of luck and know that we'll be cheering you on and uh, hopefully you'll, we'll be able to talk to you after you've come back and won those gold medals. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Go uh, Tigers and uh, go USA. <laughs> thank you, guys. <laughs> Join in summer fun at your library. Every Friday in June at 7 p.m., families are invited to the main library on Goodwood for Movies on the Plaza. Teens can participate in our Cool Career Series and Teen Summer Film Camp. Plus, there'll be children's programs galore. Find out how to sign up for EBRPL Summer Reading Program at ebrpl.com slash summer reading. ebrpl.com slash summer reading. Well, that'll be it for today's show. I'd like to thank Taryn, Kristen, and Todd for coming on. We'll be back next week, but until then, stay tuned to TigerRack.com for all your latest LSU sports news.